two OG series. Topic is saying, uh, music consumption and the evolution of hip hop from vinyl to the streaming era. What y'all think about that? You can go around saying. Okay, sounds so great. Um, I think vinyls were really cool because it's like i don't know it's like we still like vinyls to this day you know what i'm saying i know plenty of artists especially my favorite artists they still put their music in vinyls because they know that vinyls are like pretty much forever you can keep them forever especially you know you keep it intact but the fact that we have streaming now it makes it a lot easier for the artist to actually be an artist without a label without a cosign because you can upload your music from your phone you can upload you know the your music from your computer and you can put in all the credits for it and all that other stuff so it makes it easier especially coming from me as an artist like it makes it way easier for me to put out music i don't need a label to do that i could just do it from a music distributor or, mm-hmm. you know i can mm-hmm. sign up my music online and all the other stuff like but the only thing is the payments are pretty much the same like you know how like ray charles you used to get eight cents a record like we don't even get a cent for <laughs> for streaming you know what i'm saying we get like right. a quarter of or you know even less than that for streaming so i don't know that's the way i feel about it um i mean vinyl of course is i, I say vinyl is alien technology i don't i don't know how that shit works um but the streaming era is cool. My issue with the streaming era is the fact that artists have to become more than just artists. They have to fulfill a lot more roles. Myself as a producer, it can be really difficult and challenging trying to function as a producer and then put on a different hat and be a marketer, then put on a different hat and be a manager. Um, and then wanting to just focus on the music, but then stressing out about, okay, my numbers ain't really there or how do I reach these people? How do I get these numbers? And it's the culture seems to have really shifted in terms. And I recognize this in a lot of American business mm. is that it's a lot of it's about cutting costs and the less work they can have to do, the better. So they want you to be a ready made microwave pie and all they have to do is come and slice it and distribute the slices. They don't really it doesn't seem to be more of a, a, a aspect of we're all bringing ingredients to this one thing and i see that from retail work to music and artistry so the streaming is a blessing but i also think it's a curse in the the sense that artists can't really focus on just being artists and being the best artist that they can be because they also have to do these other things now you're fortunate enough no pushing them to be entrepreneurs and doing it yourself I mean, that's beautiful, but as a creative or an artist, when your mind is kind of divided, you don't really get the focus, at least for, especially for myself, it's like, you don't really get the focus on the craft and put all your energy into the craft because you also have to do other things. You know what I'm saying? It's like trying to cook, but then you also trying to vacuum and walk the dog and all that stuff at the same time. Your food ain't gonna come out fire. But if you are able to just cook, your food gonna be fire so it, and then it, it kind of it depends on how you work as an artist like it could work if you make dope shit real quick mm-hmm. and then you can distribute the energy but if like me i'm a slow brewer I, I work on projects for years i might work on a beat for months i might work on something come back to it later and then some stuff is quick but depending on, i think if you're like a more traditional slow brew artist it it it, it can take its toll so i think you know the blessing is yeah you have the freedom and the liberty to you you have the creative freedom to do what you want you can do whatever the hell you want but the problem is you don't necessarily have a machine behind you and machine yeah you the machine and then the machine ain't really even a machine that much unless you like a humongous on your own and yeah, if you're fortunate and blessed to have a team a that's great boy. yeah you got yeah, a soldier boy and course. if you have a team and you can build a team around you that's just that's it but if you on your own solo dolo you kind of you kind of in the middle of the atlantic ocean mm-hmm. now see for me i'm actually the team i'm a part of the team i'm doing the marketing i'm doing all of those things so for me i see the difference between vinyl and streaming in a completely different way For me, vinyl breeds purity and authenticity of music itself. 
and streaming and a lot of the music that I've heard come out of this streaming era is more technologically creative which I can appreciate because I mean the numbers are doing the numbers Mm -hmm. we can't sit here and say that Uzi and these people that are getting all these big streaming things aren't doing the work and getting these teams to do the work it's just are we willing to give up the authenticity of vinyl in order to achieve that kind of success Um, I think that's up to the artists themselves and how they want to produce their brand Mm. um I feel like if the song is good, the DJs are going to play it anyway. The radio is going to play it anyway. But when you get that kind of streaming, you know, notification and notoriety, you know you're going to get played. Like, all these songs are coming out on TikTok and Instagram now, and they're going off. Like, what is the song? Whoopty? That's going Mm -hmm. numbers. And it just popped up out of nowhere from one of them little viral videos. So it's like, I feel like there's a certain pressure now to have to go viral. And it's like, the the pressure shouldn't, isn't really as, at least from my end, on the artists to go viral. It's more so on the team because we are the ones that are gatekeeping that what's, vi- what's viral and what's not. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, I'm coming from a completely different perspective because I'm a DJ. I remember going to Music Liberated down on Park Avenue in Saratoga or going to New York, going to B Street Records, and it was just the, the vibe, the whole aura of going in there, politicking with people, literally, literally hours going through records and finding stuff that, you know, white labels are stuff that, you know, Biggie's uh, white label records and Black Moon and Smith and Wesson. I mean, I miss that whole going to the record store and actually taking the time to literally go through each and single one until you find that gem. One thing I do love about the stream and you know, everything being on the internet now, type it in, I find it. Okay. That one record that I couldn't find back it's in so 92, accessible. 93 years. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is accessible. I mentioned it earlier how being a DJ now, back then, when I had to go to a party, I had to get those heavy 1200s, get everything together, crates of records to sit there. Now it's like a God's gift to the DJs because all of my music is on that little teeny thing over there. It don't even look like a hard drive, but it is. I plug it right into my computer. You know, walking around with the controller under my arm, backpack with all my stuff. It's easier for us now. It's like, it's a good thing for DJs and I guess producers now, but it takes away that human connection where you're going into the record store and I might run into you and we chopping it up. You're looking for one thing, I'm looking for one thing and we see each other all the time. We build that connection. That's what I missed about the vinyl era. Mm-hmm. Cause mm-hmm. it's not that one-on-one thing. We're going to the record store, they get to know you. Bro, check this record out. Go over there and play it on the turntable and you just take it. That's how I got uh, J. Rue's The Damages uh, Come Clean. Mm-hmm. Happened to be in music regularly. Right? I actually remember it like it was yesterday. And um, the guy was playing it on the turntable. And I'm like, yo, what's that? And he pointed me over to where the record was. I went and got it, played it, listened to it. It had the instrumental, the acapella. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything about J. Rue the Damage. I knew about Premier. That's what drew me to the beat. Because I'm like, yo, that's off. Mm-hmm. Never heard that before. So I missed that. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think. You know, nowadays, everybody's just in their room with the door locked on the computer and finding everything. Now, there's no the human part of it is gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's like you said earlier, it's a gift and a curse because it's like you can point out 50 billion things that's good, but then there's 50 billion things that's bad. You just have to bridge them both and try to make it work for you. That's why I was saying you can turn a lot of people into entrepreneurs because you're doing it yourself. Yeah, on the job training, you're learning how to be your own manager, learning how to uh, market your own stuff. You know who your demographics, who you're gaining, you know who you want to hear your stuff, so you have that control versus just walking into the record store and just taking a shot, just playing it, checking it out. And mm-hmm. Sometimes you couldn't even play it. You just had to take a shot. You can't trust it. Yeah. 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 No, but if you have an ear for music and you're just pretty good with it, you know, it, it works out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, gems that I caught like that. Another one I can think of, Above the Law. Mm-hmm. Um, the joint they did with NWA, um, I think it was called I'm a Menace. Mm-hmm. Something like that. But I remember, oh, I saw the music video. <laughs> on our music video box and I literally got up after I saw the video and walked over to Music Liberated. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't have that anymore. Everything's on YouTube. You just had to be in love with the artist. Look for it. Back then, it was pushed to you. Now you had to look for it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, right, right.